Hello everyone and welcome to Undrop for InnoDB Overview. Unfortunately, data loss happens even to the best people. I've been doing data recovery since 2008 and have worked with many companies that hire high-profile engineers, follow best practices and take regular backups. Yet, they have lost data. In aviation, the probability of a disaster is very low. However, the pilot could not sleep well, the weather could be bad, something could break in a plane, onboard monitoring could not catch the problem. If six to seven failures like that happen simultaneously, the plane will crash. Database infrastructure is less reliable than that, so it's more of a question when rather than if. I myself lost data on several occasions. Here's a haiku about my university project. Having been erased, the document you're seeking must now be retyped. This video will help you to prepare for the data loss disaster. I will introduce you to the Undrop for InnoDB toolkit, explain general principles of data recovery, and show how to use each of the tools. I assume several input conditions. First of all, there is no good backup copy to restore the database from. It can be simply missing because a backup job didn't run, or the backup copy cannot be restored for whatever reason, or the backup copy is too old. Second assumption is that the tables we need to recover are in a DB. The toolkit doesn't work with other storage engines like MyAzam, Archive, etc. Untrop for InnoDB is a toolkit that works with InnoDB files at the same low level as InnoDB itself. You know, this toolkit became possible because the InnoDB author made a couple of wise decisions. First is InnoDB is obsessed with data consistency. Let me explain. If InnoDB reads a page and something is off in the page, it will crash. If a page checksum is wrong, if the next page address is wrong, if some field in some header is wrong, InnoDB will crash. I saw reasoning in the source code comments that goes, if we face unexpected values, something must be wrong and the DBA must intervene. Otherwise, data will be further corrupted and that's not good. Life proved it was a good decision. Most of the corrupted databases can be successfully recovered and it's not rare without any data loss. Second, InnoDB doesn't rush to destroy deleted data. If you delete a record, it will be only flagged as deleted. It will take some time and particular events before the deleted record space will be reused. You can think of undrop for InnoDB as a forgiving InnoDB reader. If it sees a wrong checksum, it will ignore it. If it reads a record and it doesn't look like a valid record, it will shift a byte forward and try again. At a very high level, data recovery process boils down to three steps. Let's say we need to recover a table. Step one. Find in the DB pages that belong to the table in question. Step 2. Fetch as many records as possible for the pages we found in the step 1. Save the records in a text dump. Step 3. Load the table dump into a healthy MySQL instance. Let's get to the toolkit installation. Undrop for InnoDB is hosted on GitHub.
I will show the installation on the empty Ubuntu Focal container to show you the full cycle of installing dependencies, uh, compiling the tool, etc. So let's run the container. And uh, before we can clone the source code, we need to update uh, local uh, metadata and uh, install git. I have two containers running on my laptop. One runs uh, this Linux image. We will run the toolkit on this container. There is another container that runs MySQL server. We will use it as a healthy MySQL instance and uh, use it to recover some of tables. Now we can clone the toolkit. A shared volume is mounted on slash share. I will use it to share data between these two containers. So here's share. Um, so I will clone the source code in this slash share directory. Now, there are some dependencies. We need make GCC, Flex and Bison to compile the toolkit. Let's install it. apt-get minus y install make GCC, Flex and Bison. All right. Now we can compile the tool, which is simple make. There are some warnings. Fortunately, they are not errors. <laughs> Stream parser is a tool that takes a file as input value and uh, finds in the DB pages from this in this file. When stream when stream parser finds in the DB pages, it sorts them by page type and uh, index ID. Uh, let's see how it works and uh, I will explain you uh, what is page type and what is index ID. So <clears throat> there is another volume mounted on this container. Uh, it's uh, in varlib mysql. So let's see what's in there. varlib mysql. We can pass as an input value any file that contains in the DB pages. I know that IBD files contain obviously in the DB pages because IBD file is a in the DB table space. Let's parse stuff IBD file. The result of the tool's work is a directory with in adb pages. If we go inside, we will see two subdirectories. These are page types. In adb supports many more page types than two, but these two are important for us for data recovery. Fill page index is a type that stores uh, index pages. 
the pages where InnoDB keeps user data. So this is very important for us. Another page type is field page type blob. This is page type where InnoDB stores external pages. If a table has a blob field and uh, the blob field is long enough so it doesn't fit into a single InnoDB page, uh, the value of this blob will be stored in external pages. So these external pages will have type field page type blob. Uh, this is good to know. So we need this page type only if a table has blob values. Now what's inside page index? Uh, file. Uh, what's inside page index uh, directory? These are so-called pages file. What it's actually is, what it actually is, is a uh, InnoDB pages con con concatenated together in one single file. This integer is index ID. You know, humans, they operate with table names, right? Stuff, table. But in a DB inside, internally, it doesn't operate with table names. Instead, it operates with uh, table IDs and index IDs. So, the stuff table, it has table ID. And this table, it has three indexes. One of them is the primary index. This is a clustered index where InnoDB uh, stores all records together with the primary key, as well as the, the remaining fields of the table. And there are two secondary, uh, secondary indexes. Uh, for us, they are not very important. Sometimes they are important, but for the successful recovery, the primary index is enough uh, to restore a table. All right. Another page type is fill, fill page type blob. It's external pages, as I said. And uh, it happens that our stuff table, it has some external pages. We will see later why, why we need them. Now, it's worth mentioning that Stream parser can accept any stream of bytes as an input argument. It can accept a simple file, like we did in this example. It can also uh, accept file with a disk image, or it can even accept disk volume as input argument for minus f option. But that's more more of advanced use of the stream parser. One thing to remember about it is stream parser reads a file, any input stream of bytes, finds in the DB pages in, in that stream, and uh, sorts the in the DB pages by page type and index ID. We need this data be pre-sorted in that way for further uh, step of the data recovery. That I will show using the next tool, which is CParser. Now, CParser. CParser is a tool that 
read the file it can be one index uh, one index page it can be multiple pages and uh, it assumes that these are InnoDB pages and what cparser does is it tries to read records from this page and uh, when it finds a record it outputs this record as tab separated values record to standard output cparser also produces some output to standard error output this output is a load data in file SQL command that you can use to load the table dump into a live MySQL instance. So let me show how it works. First of all, what cparser needs is a file with InnoDB pages. In the previous uh, step, Stream Parser created uh, three index pages for us. I said that one of them is uh, primary index. So ideally this is what C Parser needs. Field page type index. Three files here. The primary index is usually the index with the lowest index ID. So it's it's safe to say that 113 is our primary index. Now, in the DB page itself, it doesn't store any information about record structure. It is assumed that whatever reads a record knows about how many fields in this record. Uh, what types of fields of and uh, how large they are. So if you just take uh, in the DB page, you have no idea how to read record from it if you don't know the table structure. That's why C parser needs some information about uh, table structure. And uh, this information can be passed with argument minus t. And uh, what it needs is, is a file with create table statement. What cparser will do is it will read that file, it will read the create table statement, parse the SQL code, and uh, will prepare internal uh, structures for reading records from in a DB page. So I happen to have Sakila uh, structure in Andropo in a DB repo. So let, let's see let's see how C parser works. Now We can uh, we can store uh, output of the command in in a file stuff that will be our top separated values dump and uh, standard output we will save in a SQL file and save, save it in the same directory. So, cparser is done. Let's see what it produced stuff. Now, it found two records and uh, each record is one line in this table dump. These are internal fields this is transaction id this is rollback pointer 
I will not cover, cover them in this video, maybe later. This is table name and this is, this is where user data starts. This is our first field, this is second field, third field and so on. Okay. Now let's see what we have in, in the second file. As I said, it's a load data local in file statement that you can use to uh, load the table dump into a live MySQL instance. It's convenient uh, to use this SQL statement because it correctly lists um, field names if there is any conversion needed it generates correct uh, statement for that for example here we we have a value of picture which is a blob field and uh, it's a hex well it's a binary value the table uh, c parser stores this value in hex format so to load it back into mysql we need to unhex it this is what the load data in file statement does but look at this error it says it couldn't open page number six and the reason for that is um, this table has some values that are stored in external pages and uh, cparser tried to access this uh, page but we didn't specify directory where these pages can be found so cparser was looking in the current directory and uh, obviously didn't find them so to fix this problem, there is another option to see parser. And that option is minus B. And uh, you have to pass directory with blob pages. Remember that other type? So that's, that's why we need it. If you run C parser again and uh, check the dump again oh many more records well actually not many more records but this record the first record has a value in hex format of the picture field right okay and uh the second, uh, the second record is it's a record without picture value, so that's why it's null here. Okay, so that's that's all for C parser. Um, we have table dump we have sql file sql command to load this dump and uh, that would be step number three the step number three is to take the table dump take the sql command and uh, load the dump into a live mysql instance I have a container with running uh, MySQL with running MySQL server here, and uh, this is a healthy instance, right? If you select uh, table stuff, it will show two records. So this is what the table contained initially: two records. You see that uh, there is a picture value, it's a binary value because it's a blob, it's a obviously PNG file. 
there is a second record it doesn't have a picture so let's uh, delete these records uh, from the table delay delete from Sakila uh, Sakila uh, staff I think it will complain about foreign keys okay yeah it did for that there is a magic command that we can execute and uh, in the DB allows us to delete records from the table now uh, we have a table dump dump we have it we have a comment now we need to load this table dump into the live MySQL instance so first what we need to do is uh, fix path to the dump in the SQL command so for that let's open the file and let's specify correct path to the dump and now loading the table dump is as easy as this command if we open my scale client again you will see same table two records um, blob field in a binary format and there is a second record so that's the idea of uh, of the toolkit let me repeat find an adb page extract records from in a db page and the load table dump into mysql <sighs> i hope at this point you get a general idea how to recover data with and drop for in a db if it's a corrupted table you take an ibd file extract records from it and reload it into a healthy mysql instance a drop table is a more complicated case, but the principle is the same. You take stream parser, parse a partition where MySQL stores the data, extract records from InnoDB pages, and load them back into MySQL. Now, some people try to undelete an IBD file. You know, when InnoDB drops a table, it deletes the respective IBD file from disk. So they try to undelete the file and then import the table space. Unfortunately, that is not the best way to do the job. Why is that? Because when the undelete tool tries to rebuild the file, the resulting file is often corrupt. I've seen undeleted file with large areas of zeros instead of user data finding the file pieces and reconstructing the file is a much more complex task comparing to finding simple in a db pages that's why usually stream parser produces better results than undelete tools anyway I encourage you to get familiar with Undrop for InnoDB, practice with it before it's really needed. Because real data recovery situation is extremely stressful and it helps a bit when you know what to do. And of course, take the backups. TwinDB provides a backup tool for MySQL. Check out my GitHub and uh, good luck.